So why build a 383? No, the real question is, why build a 302 or a 327 or a 350 when you can have the extra displacement and torque of a 383? Hello everybody! Yes, it's that time again. I am Richard Holdner, this is my channel, and welcome. Today we're talking about 383 Chevys and why they're so awesome, but before we do that, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. But if you're one of those guys thinking, you know, you know what I need to do? I need to upgrade my 350. I need to put like rods and pistons in it. I'm here to tell you, don't just put rods and pistons in it. You need to step up and also get a crank. Heck, you don't even have to get a forged crank because I've never broken a cast crank. But if you're going to upgrade the internals, do the crank because more displacement is better. And here's why. Okay, guys, let's start off our discussion with why I usually recommend guys, if they're putting together a motor, actually building one on a small block, you might as well just do a 383. If you're going to put rods and pistons in a 350, just step up in the displacement. I'm going to show you what you get when you do that. And we're going to start off our discussion on how cool a 383 is by taking a look, obviously, at a 350. Because the reality is that for a lot of guys... When I recommend the low buck option for getting a motor running and working and getting in your car, I usually just tell them, look, go to the wrecking yard, get a Vortec 350, put a dual plane manifold on it, and if you want, put a camshaft or whatever in it, put a carburetor and a, and a distributor in it, and put it in there, and, and away you go. And that's kind of what we're starting with, but I'll show you what happens and why we like why we do like bigger motors in this case. But this is our, this is a small block 350. This is a typical Vortec uh, L31 350. Um, and what I did to this one, I do to lots of these. So we'll go to the wrecking yard. We'll grab the Vortec motor, take the factory fuel injection off of it, and then equip it with a dual plane intake manifold. In this case, we use a actually a GM dual plane designed for the Vortec heads. We use a 650 Holley carburetor. We had long tube headers that we use on the dyno. It had a Mazir electric water pump. And we put in an MSD distributor because that's what we had laying around at West Tech. You could also use an HEI. And this is kind of what you're expecting to get. This is what, they're all going to be kind of plus or minus 10 horsepower from this thing. But that combination made right at 300 horsepower. And the nice thing it does, and they do this with a, even with a stock cam, good torque. 384 foot-pounds of torque. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we take something like this and what happens if we modify this and then this is kind of representative of what you could see if you modified most kind of stockish 350s by putting good heads cam and intake manifold on, although honestly the Vortec head is is pretty good already, but this is a typical kind of uh, modified 350. This one had, as we said, upgraded heads, cam, and intake. In this case, the camshaft, we replaced the factory camshaft with another hydraulic roller because this motor came factory with a hydraulic roller. And it, it was a Comp Extreme Energy 282 cam, so pretty good size camshaft. It was a 510, 520 lift, 230 236 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. This one also had a set of ported heads on it. These were RHS uh, CNC 200cc aluminum heads. And then it had an RPM air gap and a 750 hollow. We still had a distributor and we had our long tube headers on it. But it made over 400 horsepower because it had a good size camshaft in it. 405 horsepower. Peak torque was 392 or 3 foot pounds. Yeah, 392 foot-pounds. You see, we our torque, our peak torque didn't change dramatically, but what it did was it it flattened out the torque curve and extended. You know, we, we were making that that torque number farther out in the RPM range, and that allowed us to make more peak power. We did, as we have come to expect when we put cams in these things, we did lose power down low. In fact, we lost power all the way up to 37 or 3800 RPM, and that's kind of the trade-off that we expect. When we want to make a lot more power, not necessarily a whole bunch more torque, but certainly a lot more peak power, the trade-off is that we make less down low. So now let's check out what happens when we do this kind of thing on a 350 or on a 383, and then we can compare the 350 to the 383. Okay, now we've taken a look at what happens on a uh, small block, your typical small block 350 when you upgrade it with heads, cam, and intake manifold. 
Let's take a look and see a comparison between two, a fairly mild 383 and a little bit wilder one. And obviously we're not covering all the possible combinations. You could put together a 383 and then run all stock stuff on it. You could run stock Vortec heads and a stock camshaft and a stock induction system if you wanted to do maybe even two barrel and really take the power out of it if you wanted to. And on the other end, you could make a 383 you know, you could get something that's making two horsepower per cubic inch or more with really, really wild combinations. So we're going to kind of look, stay right in the in the normal range, right in the middle. But this was a mild 383. This one was actually um, assembled and built by the guys at LNR Automotive who do a lot of the machining and stuff. And this was a 383 stroker. So your typical kind of deal uh, with a 4030 bore and a 3750 stroke. This one was 10 to 1. It had a very, very mild camshaft in it because this one was going to be more of a daily driver. And this is kind of what we're going to look at when we look at the a milder versus a wilder version. But this cam was a very small hydraulic roller. It was a 210, 218. It was a 510, 520 lift. And I think it was 112 degree lobe separation angle. It had a good set of heads on it, Airflow Research 195 heads, which will certainly support a lot more power. But when you limit those with camshaft, like a 210 cam, it's pretty mild. It had the right intake manifold on, had an Edelbrock um, RPM air gap and a 750 Holley. We had our dyno headers on it. It had a, a an MSD distributor and stuff. And, and then when we ran this thing, owing to its small camshaft it made peak power at like 53 or 50 52 let's see 44 or 24 yeah right in the 52 5300 rpm range and it made 425 horsepower peak torque checked in at 476 foot pounds of torque so it did good it had more it had around 450 horsepower or 450 foot pounds of torque even down at 2500 rpm so the nice thing about this motor is it's got plenty of torque which you want which is really the benefit of the 383 it's got a mild camshaft in it it's going to drive well you could use it with a stock converter if you had that kind of automatic transmission it's going to start up and idle well and you know be really good um, part throttle response and stuff. Now it's not going to, it doesn't, it made, made more power than our modified 350, but not by a lot. But as we'll show you when I show you the comparison, it makes a lot more torque. But if you wanted to get a little bit wilder on your 383, we have those as well. Like I said, very easy to make. It's easier to make more, even more power with, you know, more displacement. This one was a little bit wilder. It had a bigger camshaft in it. It had a 543, 538 lift, a 232, 238 degree duration split, 112 degree lobe separation angle. It was 10.2 to 1. It had 195 AFR Street Eliminator heads on it. Still had an RPM air gap. This one was run with a 950 Holley, although that's... You know, that's more than enough carburetor, but it works on the engine dyno. And it had a, a good oiling system on the stuff. And we it ran an MSD distributor. We had our long tube headers on it. And this one pushed power up over 500 horsepower to 508. Peak torque was up a little bit to 490 foot-pounds. Not a ton, but as you can see, what it did was we started trading power because we had a, a bigger camshaft. Um, even though the other things, the airflow research heads and the dual plane intake manifold kind of remain consistent, it shows you what camshaft can do. We had a little bit more displacement on this one, but it did trade power. It lost power up to 3,900 RPM and then picked power up though quite a bit all the way out. Now this thing revved all the way to 6,500. It made peak power at 60. 508 at 6200 and so it was still you know not a high rpm motor by any stretch of the imagination but a good running 383 but then you'd have to decide which one of these would you be happier with and in my opinion they would be good for different applications if you wanted to have as more of a street strip thing maybe the 500 horsepower version if you wanted a street deal although you could take it to the strip the 400 horsepower would be a much better driver maybe a truck or towing kind of application very good stuff but now let's check out a comparison a quick comparison between like the 350 stuff and the 383 and I'll show you why I usually recommend to go big. Okay guys, now let's take a look at a comparison between the 350 and the 383 and I'll show you why I normally recommend. If a guy's putting something together, if you're just gonna go cheap and you need a small block, just go to the wrecking yard and grab one, like I said, put, uh, 
carburetor intake manifold distributor on it, get it in there, get it running, and it works good. You can even put a little camshaft in it. That is a definite low buck way to go. But if you're thinking about putting rods and pistons in something, or maybe even doing the build that you've always wanted to do, don't build a 350. You definitely should build a 383. And here's a good example why. So this is our stock 350, our 300 horsepower 350 that we got from the wrecking yard. And here's what a 383, our mild 383 looks like. And you can see, I'm going to go ahead and move myself kind of over here, down and out of the way. So, I mean, you could, the, the thing that's evident, obviously, and the, it's not totally an apples to apples comparison. And please make a comment about that because, you know, I'd always love to hear that. Ha having a stock Vortec headed 350 versus something that has uh, aftermarket heads and camshaft and that kind of stuff on it. But it shows you something that's very important, that the 383 doesn't just make more power, which we expected it to. It just makes a lot more torque and it makes a lot more torque everywhere from top to bottom. It does a really good job of that. And if you're if you're thinking, hey, yeah, Richard, but what if we modified our 350, which we did, and I'll show you. Okay, we had our modified 350. Look, the modified 350 makes uh, up here 405 versus 425 for the 383. So comparable, let's say, on the big end, but again, it's just down. In fact, down low, it's it's even worse off than the stock 350 was. So you can see this is this is really a perfect illustration of why you would want a combination that has more displacement. You can forget about whether it's bore or stroke, and you guys can have arguments about all of that. But the reality is, is that making it bigger makes it better, especially in terms of torque production. The bigger the motor is, the more torque you're going to have, especially down low, because nothing adds low speed torque like displacement, except possibly for boost. But with more displacement, you have more torque. And all that means is the motor is going to be much more responsive, much more fun to drive. So if you're putting something together, put together something big. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.